my whole family is coming to the Transformers premiere that's coming up because it's it's going to be in Brooklyn and our, me and Anthony Ramos oh. characters are from Brooklyn. And so it's going to be a big, big, big celebration. I'm very excited. Yo, man, BK in the building for okay. sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, does your dad think you're cool? <laughs> totally, totally thinks I'm cool. But the one thing that was really nice the other day was that I he told me that I was always worth it. You know, outside of the mm-hmm. act, I'm gonna cry. Ah, outside of the acting, wow, I made emotion. Um, because I, I do think I went tunnel vision on these things. So I said, oh, I'm gonna be worth it to my parents. I'm gonna be worth it to my neighborhood. I'm gonna be worth it. And um, and it and it took a it took a while until about this year really where I'm starting to be like, oh, I'm you know, or maybe it was 2019 or 2020 where I said, oh, I'm worth it just because I am because I exist. You know, and therefore it is. I'm worth it because I have breath in my body. I'm worth it. You know, outside of everything, because it was like 2019 where I realized, oh man, I don't know if I love myself. I know that I love myself as an artist, as a poet, as an actor. I was like I know that, but outside of that, because that love is transactional. You know, we look at other people like, oh, what do they want from us? What do they want from from us? But meanwhile, not looking at where, like, what do I? What do I'm pulling out of me? Like. When am I being vicious to myself? Oh, you didn't do that. You, you messed up that. You messed that up. You messed that up. Come on, you got to be. You know, when I'm doing that to myself, it's almost the same thing as transactional, because I celebrate myself when I do something really well, and then when I'm learning and I'm and I and I make a mistake, am I harsh on myself? Do I call myself names? You know, it was in 2020 where I completely stopped calling myself names. Like if I made a mistake, I'd be like, oh, that's so dumb, dumb. Oh, and then one time I called myself, say, oh, we said we're not gonna do that no more. We're not gonna name call. So I don't I don't call myself names anymore. I don't let other people do it either. You know, like, it's like, you know, everybody want to be like, oh, that's my bitch. Da, 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 bitch da, da. I beg, I don't like that word. Oh, you're like, no, mm. I don't like it. And, you know, I got mm. certain friends, you know, certain people, certain friends, I'm like, oh, but, and I, and I know that that's my, that's my friends, but like a lot of, even a lot of my friends, I'm like, I don't like that word. Find something else. You know, before I expect, oh, it's not mm. that deep, Dom. It's not that deep. No, it is deep. I don't want to be called that. For whatever reason, I don't know, some psychological thing. Maybe when I was a kid, teenager, being in Brooklyn and people saying, I don't know what it is, but I don't like it. I don't want it. Call me something else. <laughs> you know? And just mm. being, being able to have boundaries, knowing that that's not rude or mean or not dramatic or not too much. It just is what it is. I don't like it. Find something else. <laughs> Oof, girl, listening to this growth right now, you just don't know. You out there preaching a word to somebody who really needed to hear that myself included. Mm-hmm. Um, because what I know people think that is is quote unquote therapy talk, but it's true. It's like the two phrases that I have found to be the most useful, particularly in the last 10 years of my life are, you are enough and be gentle to yourself. Those are the two phrases. Yeah, And it's like, uh, if you center those phrases in your life, um, people will be surprised what you can manifest. Something I know you also really deeply believe in. Uh, Cause two of my other favorite things about you you gotta go beyond your acting ability is that one, you're a reader. And as an author, that is very, that is like the most endearing quality. I can, mm-hmm. I, I can tell you because it is hard to sell books these days. I know. Um, you're a reader and, and you journal. Those are the two things that I find to be incredible. So let's talk about your journaling history. When did it start and why did you start? Uh, it started back in like uh, 2002 or something. Uh, Whenever I was 12 years old, I went on a cruise and I bought this this book from the Bahamas, but I didn't use it. But my mom said, no, Dom, you should journal so that you can remember, you can remember things. And I was like, oh, okay. And I had a very close relationship with my mom and I was, and, she, and she's very trusting. And so therefore she was trustworthy. So I never feared what my other friends feared, which is like, you don't think your parents going to read it? You think your mom's going to read it? I never thought that my mom was going to read it um, because I, 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 my mom made me feel so comfortable that I could tell her anything. I had my first kiss with a boy and I like, was like, mom, I kissed a boy. And I was a kid or something like 12, I don't know. <laughs> like, but, but, you know, a lot of my friends were nervous. Uh, but I was like, anytime that I was going to do something that I felt I couldn't tell my mom, then I was like, I probably shouldn't do it. And then I wouldn't do it because she did make it that easy for me to like um, express myself. So I started journaling uh about around 12 years old and I have all of them um and I started video journaling as well in 2020 because I felt like my brain was going too fast with my hands and I was getting busy with press and so it'd be easy to just 
get out of a Zoom or something and just put my computer and say, okay, so today is da 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 and to look back and, and see where I was, just not not in just writing, but in my voice and how I express things in my eyes when I cry on it because I'm like, I'm so like, and I'm hearing the, the longing in my voice as I'm looking back at it now. You know, I really want to do something with it, like a documentary of some sorts with these with these journals. Uh, if I'm that brave, if I'm that vulnerable, we'll see. But um, yeah, so it started with it started when I was 12 years old, and it's uh, beautiful because I would look back. I know the growth that I have when I could look back and not beat myself up about things. Before I used to read my journal, but oh, I'm cringing. Like close it, like I can't even deal with myself. Right, so that's so mean, uh, right? But I couldn't even deal with myself. And now it's like, oh, I could read it and be like, oh man, she's growing and she's learning. Oh, she's full of a lot of love, and she just wants to express it. Oh, that's not bad. Oh yeah, she has a lot of love for that guy who doesn't re- re- uh, reciprocate it, whatever the case is. But that's not bad. That's just learning. You know what I mean? And I'm able to be a lot more gentle when I read my journals. And um, wow, that that that's, that's good to hear. But I have my own like line. So I have this tattoo that says "Be yourself, love," uh, and it's in my mom's handwriting. And so I start I for my birthday this year I launched like these hats and sweat and a sweatshirt and now. In time with Transformers, I'm going to launch these journals, Be Yourself Love journals, um, so people could express themselves. <laughs> well, I love that. And, um, you know, I love that you had the, the trust in yourself um, to continue to do this, especially in a video format, which, you know, can't be easy to do, especially if you look back on them and you're like, oh, what state of mind was, was I in there? Um, as part of my, when I wrote my memoir, as part of my process, I still had some of my old journals from when I was around that age. And I was not able to do what you what you just talked about. I wasn't able to go back and not sort of judge. How am I at my big age judging my 12 year old self? I wasn't able to not do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard. But but it's it's like when I think about it, it's more of a judgment on myself. I'm, I learned I started learning in 2020 that uh, the more I have compassion for myself, the easier it is to extend it for other people or the more I have compassion for other people, the easier it is to extend it to myself. You know, vice versa is is really is actually really beautiful um, when you think about it. When you're able to just be like, mm, if I did this thing and I was misunderstood uh, because of my perception of this, how many times am I misperceiving somebody else? Or I started to have compassion for my dad and my stepdad in 2020, where I was like, man, people only know how to love from which they have the capacity to love like it, you know and and I might be like oh but I can express myself and that but I also grew up in a house where my mom at 12 years old was like damn you could say it I was writing spoken word and I was telling her business and my troops and she was like well it's your truth Dom too you could say it I'm performing on stages in front of people that's gonna meet my mom in two seconds it's okay Dom you could say it so like I, I came from that household where a lot of people come from oh you stay in the child's place um you don't tell my business to nobody you know what I'm saying and and so I don't know what it's like to be a man growing up in the 80s in Brooklyn or the 90s in Brooklyn, like my stepdad and just things like that. And so I was able to be like, man, I have this capacity for love, but why do I expect that they would or that they love differently and it shows up differently? And that doesn't mean that if somebody's loving you in a way that it doesn't feel good to you, that, that you have to accept it. Even if they like, you know, with my father for a while, it was like, well, I understand I have compassion for it, but uh, he, it doesn't make me feel good. The way this person is loving, the way that this person is showing up, it doesn't make me feel good. So I don't, it doesn't mean I have to stay for it. I can still love them from a distance. So there is finding that like balance and things like that. So how do you think um, you being in the type of household that you're in, where your mother allowed you to express what you were feeling, where you journaled, where you were able to really have a great amount of emotional freedom. How do you think having that emotional freedom and that safety informed you as your acting career progressed? Um, well, it definitely just gave me the wherewithal to be like, mm, I could do that. I'm going to do it. And then I was in a theater company. I started acting when I was 15 in a theater company. Then in order to act, you had to write your own stuff. So I had to write my own spoken word. I had to write my own monologues from my own perspective. And so that was um, really empowering. They said, as kids, you have something to say. We, we used to do during spring break a show every year called Uncensored. And it would be a kids in New York saying whatever they wanted to say on a stage and it was really beautiful. And then we had to talk about it to the adults, to the other kids that would come from different schools to watch. So uh, that was empowering and it gets so, so in my life, in my personal childhood, it was empowering to be able to say 
how I felt. And then when I got with this theater company, I said, no, you have a voice. It doesn't matter if it's on stage or in, in the privacy of your home. You have a voice. You can say it. Express yourself. So now I saw it. And then it was like, when if I wrote a monologue or something that was too long, the director, he wouldn't say, oh, let me cut it. He would be like, you all, it's too long. You know what you want to say. So now I would have to find what it is I want to say concisely. And so that was like also empowering. So when I went into other situations where somebody's trying to change my voice or change my words, I said, that's not my voice. I didn't say it. You know, and it, it was really, but it was also really hard because a lot of times I felt like I was a scapegoat or the black sheep, or I would be really empowered to speak up. And then these other girls in the in a theater company that I was in, they would be afraid. And so then it would be me, this lone wolf, this lone person, being like, "No, you can't say that. That we don't. We feel like, oh, they say, oh, you feel like that, but nobody else is here saying it. But meanwhile, in the part in the back, they're like, but Dom this, Dom that. And so I go like this." You know, I mean, I, and then I'm by, and then I look around and nobody's with me to do it. So that was definitely a learning curve and hard as well. So uh, I saw a, a, another interview you did where you said a guidance counselor told you early on when you were expressing your dreams of wanting to be an actor that you didn't have the it factor, yeah, which is a horrible thing theater. to tell a child. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do musical. Yeah. Theater. So yeah, musical theater, mm -hmm. correct? So. Um, one, tell me that you um, access your inner petty and have since talked to this guy, this counselor, and be like, oh, I had an it factor. Look at me now. <laughs> tell me this moment happened. <laughs> uh, no, I, actually, I, I, her last name is so specific too, but I haven't found her. I don't know. I don't know where she is. But I think, again, it, that, that compassion, like, because she also had on her board the same day, some people just can't. And I don't know, like, so that that's really must be really painful for her, right? To like actually have not achieved whatever dream it was that she achieved. So then that she wanted to achieve. So now she's writing this on this board. I always knew since I was 12 years old, I was like, man, I got to be an actor because I know that I'm going to be miserable if I'm doing a job that I don't love. And then everybody around me is going to suffer. I don't know. I had this weird thought when I was 12. So I said, I have to do it. I can't be miserable. I have one life to live. I have to do it. So uh, imagine at 12 years old, having that resolve and knowing, but her being at whatever age she was at, probably just now realizing it and being really miserable. It has to be really sad to, to wake up one day and say, man, I have one life to live and I feel like I wasted it. I mean, as long as you have breath in your lungs, you didn't waste it, but I, I, definitely, get, I definitely get that. I feel like that with music a lot of the times. <laughs> 